Hello and welcome to the Engineer to Mommy podcast where we chat about birth, personal development, my life as an engineer in construction, and other fun things. My name is Jess and I'm a mom of two little ones. I am also a birth and life coach, breathwork facilitator, and engineer in construction management. My goal is to share my experience with all these areas in my life to help women feel more confident in regards to birth, postpartum, career, and life in general. In this episode, we will chat about childbirth pain, the physiology of birth, my experience with contractions during both of my labors, and how you can make your labor pleasurable. Before we get started, I do want to say that I am recording while my two little ones are up and running around. My husband is taking care of them, but you might hear sounds. Um, This is life as a mom, so yeah. (laughs) I just want to say that if you're in a stage of life where you're preparing to be pregnant or you are pregnant and you think you resonate with my approach to birth, then I'd love to invite you to my coaching program, Own Your Birth. In this one-to-one program, I help you reduce your anxiety and fear of birth by 80% so you can advocate for yourself and your baby, experience less pain during birth, and ultimately be the best mama bear for your baby. Okay, let's get started. If you are scared of the pain during labor and you don't know if you'll be able to handle it, you're not alone. I went through this exact same thing with my first pregnancy and even my second at first. I couldn't quite wrap my head around how a baby would be able to come out of my vagina. I know it sounds kind of silly, but a lot of us have these thoughts and you know exactly what I'm talking about if you have these thoughts. (laughs) I mean, women have done this from the beginning of times, but still. Could I do it? That was a question that ran through my mind many, many times. I'm a huge wimp when it comes to pain. I was so afraid of labor pain that every day after a long day at the job site and an hour commute from the job site, I would come home, sit on the couch and watch birth stories, births, and anything to do with birth on YouTube to help me figure out how I would cope with the pain of labor. So let's chat about what pain is. Pain is a warning system. It's a signal in your nervous system that tells your brain that something is wrong. Pain involves both the mind and the body. The best example to prove that pain happens in the mind is a thing called phantom limb pain. And this is when people continue to experience pain in a limb after it has been amputated. The pain is real, but the physical manifestation of that pain is not there. Another example is the study conducted in the University of Siena where children were randomly divided into three groups to have blood sample taken. One group was given no distraction A second group had mothers attempt to distract their children by talking to them, soothing them, and the third group was allowed to watch TV cartoons while the procedure was done. None of the children were given any form of anesthesia. All the children and their mothers rated their perception of how painful the procedure was. The children with no distraction scored the pain as three times as high as the children who could watch the cartoons. So you see, pain is not just the physical manifestation of the pain. How you think about pain is going to affect how you feel the pain. And how you feel the pain is going to be affected by many things, like your mood, your attitude, your environment, how safe you feel, and how supported you feel. For example, Someone that is going through a lot of stress from work or family life can have a lowered tolerance for pain. If you would like to learn more about the science of pain, I'll leave my favorite podcast episode on pain in the links below. And later on in the episode, we will talk about how you can use your mind-body connection to help you feel less pain during labor. Let's now chat about the physiology of birth. 
It wasn't until my second pregnancy that I read The Bradley Method of Childbirth by Susan McCutcheon. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, So it wasn't until I read this book that I began to understand the concept of labor pain. I highly encourage you to get this book. I'll leave it in the information down below. But ladies, if you only read one book on birth, this is the one that you need to read. I think the Bradley Method book was the first place that actually described the physiology of birth, aka why we experience contractions in the first place. Here's a summary from the book. Your uterus is a big bag of muscles. It's actually the largest collection of muscles and the strongest muscle in your body. These muscles are made out of vertical and horizontal muscle fibers. A contraction happens when this bag of muscles, your uterus, flexes and contracts. And when your uterus flexes, you feel a powerful sensation which some might describe as painful. During the first stage of labor, a contraction starts at the top as the long vertical muscles begin to flex. They contract and shorten and continue to contract, gathering strength and keeping on flexing until the uterus gets a good stretching and pulling sensation at the cervix to open up the cervix of it. The purpose of these contractions is to open the cervix and get the cervix up and over the baby's head. During the second stage of labor, aka the pushing stage, the contractions become pushing contractions. The uterus now works like a piston to push your baby out. The uterus or your bag of muscles will apply about 35 to 40 pounds of force to push baby down and out of the birth canal. And this process is actually called the fetal ejection reflex, where your body will push your baby out without you having to actively push. And this happens when you feel safe and supported. And by the way, I had no idea that this was a thing until I actually experienced it during my labor, during my second labor. It was crazy and beautiful, and it just reminded me how freaking amazing our bodies are. And I will definitely be talking more about my birth experience later on, but I just wanted to take a little bit of time to say that you don't have to push when your midwife or your OBGYN is telling to push. You can't wait for that uh, feeling that you get when your body is ready to push. It'll feel sort of like when you have to go to the bathroom, number two, and you feel oppression down there. It's a very similar feeling, except this is times 10. (laughs) Understanding the physiology of labor helped me visualize what was happening in my body when I was feeling, quote unquote, pain. I pictured those long muscles flexing and pulling the cervix open. I pictured the circular muscles relaxing and lengthening, widening the opening on, of my cervix. I also pictured this bag of muscles acting as a piston to push my baby out through the birth canal all while I was experiencing the contraction. This imagery helped me manage my pain because I realized that the pain I was experiencing was not indicative of something being wrong with me. No, this pain, this labor pain is actually just a big large bag of muscles contracting to help open up my cervix and push my beautiful baby out that I've been so patiently waiting for. This realization was a game changer. I was able to relax during the contractions while I picturing my uterus doing its job. I rode the waves of the powerful sensations knowing that my body knew exactly what to do. This helped me feel safe. 
my only job was to relax because I didn't want to make my uterus work double as hard if I was straining or tensing up my body in any sort of way. Which brings me to my second point. When you start to experience the pain of the contraction, your natural instinct is to tense up and clench your teeth as you go through the contraction and wait for the next one. When you are tensed, your uterus will have to work harder to get the same amount done with each contraction. This can make your labor last longer, make you more tired, and you might even feel more pain. What I am about to say is very important. You want to relax while this bag of muscles flexes and contracts so that you are working with the flex, with the contractions, and not against them. To drive this point home, help me with flexing your bicep. Flex and relax. Three times. Flex. Relax. Flex, relax, flex again last time, and then relax. Okay, now with your other arm, flex and relax your bicep, but now do this one while you clench your fist the whole time you're flexing and relaxing. So clench your fixed fist, and we're going to do three times of these as well. Flex, sorry, flex, relax. Flex, relax, all while you're clutching your fist. One last time. Flex and relax. Okay, so feel the difference. My left arm where I was clenching is significantly more tired than my right arm. And that is because my left arm was doing a lot more work because I was tensing the entire time I was flexing. And... This is why I have my clients practice relaxation techniques during their pregnancy. When I have my clients practice relaxation techniques, I tell them that they have two goals. The first is to notice any tension that is coming up in their body. I want them to get really, really good at noticing even the smallest tension in their body. That could be a tiny little muscle in their eyebrow or something like that. I want them to get really good at noticing these. And the second goal is to consciously release the tension. I recommend practicing relaxing every day for at least 10 minutes. And to practice this, you can simply search on YouTube for a body scan meditation. And body scan meditations are really my favorite. I promise that if you practice relaxing, you will be able to have such a much easier time with the contractions because you will simply be able to ride the waves and help your body be as efficient as possible in birthing your baby. If you do start practicing this, let me know how it goes by sending me a DM in my Instagram at engineer to mommy. Another point I want to make regarding relaxation is that contrary to what most people believe, the pain in labor is not constant. Your body naturally gives you a break in between constructions. So take advantage of that break by refueling your body, resting and relaxing. Your body is doing a lot of work. So in between contractions, I tried to sleep as best as I could and this helped me with saving my energy for the pushing stage of labor where the rests in between the contractions are a lot shorter than the beginning of the labor. All right, now to the juicy stuff. Let's talk about my experiences with contractions with both of my labors. So actually, before we start, this will be definitely be a cliff notes version of my births but if you are interested i can do a birth story episode and i can go more into depth i had my first baby in december of 2019 i already mentioned all of the research i had done during my pregnancy and because of this research i decided that i wanted to have my baby at home So I found a great midwife who had over 30 years of experience and I also decided to continue my care with my OBGYN. 
I think that I decided to continue to see my OBGYN because I was still very afraid about not being able to have my baby naturally. A question that kept bugging me was, what if I couldn't withstand the pain of childbirth and I had to transfer to the hospital? The day of my 38-week appointment with my OBGYN, I agreed to have my cervix checked to see how dilated I was. This will definitely be another podcast all about cervical checks, but the short of it is cervical checks are usually offered by OBGYN starting at 37 weeks of pregnancy, and you can... Do your own research. I highly encourage you to do your own research. But the research I have done after this experience is that cervical checks do not give you any information about when labor will begin. So there is no scientific evidence for doing this routine procedure that is often given without any informed consent. All right, so getting back on track. After a painful cervical check, by the way, they shouldn't be painful, I went home and that night around midnight, my water broke. I have my suspicions, as did my midwife, that the OBGYN performed a membrane sweep during the cervical check, which caused me to go into labor that night. My contractions did not start until around 3 p.m., But once they started, they were very, very painful, and I only felt the pain on my back. So I was having back labor because my son's back was against my spine, and I think that my baby just didn't have enough time to properly position himself in my uterus because essentially I was forced into early labor. Other things that contributed to my pain is all the thoughts and feelings that I was having while I was having the contractions. I really felt violated by my OBGYN for doing this procedure without my consent. I felt so angry for agreeing to do it without doing my research. And I was scared about what would that mean for my baby and I. And I was also very worried about having to transfer to the hospital, what the hospital staff would say about my decision to have a home birth. And then I also thought about, you know, now that we might have to transfer to a hospital, we'd have to pay for our midwife and the hospital fees. So there was just a lot of stress that I was going under. And that definitely did not allow me to relax my body whatsoever. So here I was experiencing 8 or 9 out of 10 pain. And I definitely think that the negative, my negative state of mind heavily contributed to how I was experiencing the pain. Um, And I'm not saying that, you know, I was so in my right to feel all of these things, right? Um... Which is why I really think that the best way to avoid a lot of pain due to these negative feelings is to find a birth team that really supports your decisions to birth your baby the way you want to birth your baby. And not only that, but like they really believe in the physiology of birth. And they really believe in your ability to birth your baby. The birth team that you choose is going to be the biggest indicator in how your birth outcome is going to be like. So please do your research on your OBGYNs and your midwives and, you know, really figure out if you feel comfortable and safe with these health providers. Anyways, going back to the story, it goes without saying, I tensed my body all throughout my entire birth, 
And by midnight the next day, my midwife decided that I should be transferred to the hospital since I wasn't progressing. Everyone was tired and in California, registered midwives have to transfer their clients if the water has been broken for over 24 hours. Once at the hospital, I was so exhausted and in a much needed break from these intense back contractions that I was I had for the past nine hours. So I asked for an epidural, which I'm very happy I did because I definitely needed a break and I was able to sleep for four to five hours. When I woke up, I got Pitocin, I got and that helped me uh, get things moving. Um, I think I pushed for like four hours and I was finally able to have my baby boy vaginally. Um, He was a beautiful, he is a beautiful, healthy boy. And um, it was the happiest moment of my life. That experience, though, was definitely very scary. And I wanted something more for my next birth. So let's talk about my second birth. For my second pregnancy, I wanted to make sure I did everything in my power to have the natural birth experience that I wanted. And I'll do another podcast episode about what I did. But one of the big things I started doing was the body scan meditations I mentioned earlier. I practiced at least 10 minutes before going to bed each day during my pregnancy and I think that this really helped me with the birth so I highly highly recommend again I started to feel my first contractions before my acupuncture appointment (laughs) and I tried to ignore them as much as I could I kept telling myself that I was just having Braxton Hicks contractions instead of the real thing um, I, you know, went through my whole day. I went through my acupuncture appointment, came home, cleaned. Um, I took a swim with my husband and I got things ready. But all throughout the day, I was telling myself, nope, these are just Braxton Hicks. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to freak out about. Nothing to get nervous about. They're just Braxton Hicks. And I kept telling my husband too. But I went to bed early. I, I decided to go to bed around 9 And I think it was around midnight that I could no longer ignore the sensations of the contractions. So I got up and I started swaying on my birth ball. I was able to relax my entire body throughout the contractions completely on my own, meaning that I didn't have to wake up my husband or call my midwives. I was swaying on the birth ball and walking to the bathroom and back to my living room to sway on the birth ball again. I was just flowing. And this was completely different from my first birth because in my first birth, I felt like I had to try to run away from the pain. But in this in this birth, this second experience, I let myself feel the contractions I let I let the wave of the contraction hit me and then go away again and again I also would let myself do whatever noise that needed to come out of my body so like a lot of the times I would uh, or hmm, just to get that energy out that the, that the wave of the contraction was creating in my body. And that was very helpful too. And in the breaks between contractions, I would relax my body completely. So much so that a lot of the times I would fall asleep until the next one hit me. The entire time I felt so safe and I was doing such a great job with dealing with the contractions. Um... I won't sugarcoat the, I, I won't sugarcoat anything because I don't want you to go into labor thinking of that it'll be easy. It's not easy. It's challenging. Um it's called labor for a reason. But I was 
so safe. I felt so safe. I knew that my body knew exactly what to do. And I just had to go with the flow. And at 2.30, that's when the contractions started to get a little bit closer to each other. So I decided to start heading down to the birth center. Um, we got to the birth center at 3 a.m. And I continued to labor in the shower with my husband aiming hot water on my lower back for like 20 minutes. Which leads us to the next and final point I want to give you guys regarding handling the pain of birth. Another thing that helped me with handling the pain is leaning into the pleasure of the moment with all of my senses. Yes, you heard that right. I use the word pleasure. (laughs) Birth can be pleasurable. During the most intense part of my second birth, this was the most painful part, quote unquote. I was able to flow through the contractions because I was focusing on the pleasure of the moment. I was focusing on my husband's touch. He had his hand on my hip and with the other hand he was aiming hot water with the shower head on my back to help me with the pain. We were alone in the shower and while my husband was helping me with the pain with the shower head. Um, He was just whispering like how good I was doing and I just focused on embedding this memory in my mind because it was just so beautiful experience. I felt so loved and so supportive and it was just so beautiful that we were welcoming our beautiful baby girl into this world, our world, in this way. And as I was focusing on the pleasure of this moment my water broke and as soon as my water broke I felt an intense need to push my birth team my midwives and my husband they helped me into the bathtub where my body involuntarily pushed my baby out at 3 30 a.m 30 minutes after arriving at the birth center talk about a fast birth this technique of feeling into our bodies, feeling the sensations that are coming up in our bodies is what I teach my clients. This is what helps me not only have the best birth experience, but also has helped me in my journey of healing my anxiety, my fight fawn and fight response, and has in general helped me feel more confident about myself and my place in the world. All right, so we have reached the end of this episode. I think it's a lot longer than I expected it to be, but I hope that you took something out of it. And I just want to give you a little summary of what we talked about. Um, First of all, I want you to know that you are so capable of handling the pain of labor. You are so capable to give birth to your baby. Remember that you can use the mind-body connection of experiencing pain to your favor by creating a supportive environment to birth, work through your thoughts, fears surrounding birth. The next thing that we talked about was that the pain that you are experiencing is your uterus flexing to help you birth your baby. Picture what is going on in your body when you experience a contraction. The third thing that we talked about was practicing relaxation techniques during your pregnancy so you can be a pro at relaxing your body through the contractions to help you feel less pain. And fourth, practice feeling into pleasure in your everyday life to help you feel into the pleasure during your birth. I help my clients guide them through these steps in my Own Your Birth program. So if you have any questions or want to learn more about working with me, send me a DM on Instagram at engineertomommy or send me an email at engineertomommy at gmail.com. And finally, if you resonated with anything in today's podcast, please leave me a review or share this podcast on your social media so that other women can find this episode and learn more about breath. Thank you so much for listening and I'll chat with you later. Bye.